guys. Somebody had to watch the ranch. Why? Where's it going? Excuse me. Uh, you know where I could find a Mr. James Clayton? Yeah, well, Colonel Clayton, probably in the saloon. Thanks. Hey, uh, you wouldn't want to sell that horse, would you? No. Uh, I might trade him if you got one just as good. If I had one just as good, I wouldn't be offering to buy that one. Yep. Keep me up for sale. Thanks. Looks like we're up to split up, Ben. You actually see those Indians? Oh, no, I won't go out there and get myself killed. I set the dogs on. Did they take anything? I ain't nothing to take. What about those horses? <laughs> These pulling horses ain't riding horses. What these water bags? You leave these out overnight? Oh, yeah. If that was him that was here, then he's either headed on east or he's backtracked west. I'm going to head south. Oh, there's 80 miles of desert between here and Tonopah. Yeah. Ain't have to be crazy. Yeah, that's true. But he had plenty of water, Jesse. He can make it. And every time we pick up his trail, it's been away from a telegraph point. If he gets to Tonopah, there'll be nothing between him and the border. You're guessing, Ben. Sure. So are you. All right. You want the desert? You can have it. Don't you like this the desert? Dusty, you and Jimmy ride west. The rest of us will cut east. Sure. Anything cold to drink? Corn swaler, shut up.
haven't cut that sign. By the time you get to the Diamondback water hole, you better come on back here. About 30 miles out. Right. Since there's only two of you, you better watch out for them mutes. How many were there? Somebody said there's eight, but only four of them had horses. There's, there's a cavalry patrol out looking for them. Yeah, they'll catch up. Good luck. Joseph, there's only one way to find out. It's 130 degrees or more. Well, we ought to be able to reach that water hole for sundown.
raise your hands up high. High! Freeze right there. Drop the gun. Okay, you can turn around now. <laughs> I thought you were sleeping kind of sound. Oh. What's he doing here? Well, my pack horse spooked and lost my water supplies. You prospected? Now and then. <laughs> you sure kind of jumpy. Yeah, well, I had to outrun me a whole pack of Indians this morning. Well, I ain't one of them. Could I get me a drink of water? Show you some. Help yourself. Thank Stand still. Way with raw hide there, mister. It's not too tight, not too soft. You don't seem too worried, mister. It's a long way back to town, mister. Long, hard way. Why are you going through all this trouble? You could just hang me up to the nearest tree and be done with it. You haven't tried yet. Oh, that's right. First the trial, then the hanging. That depends. Well, you don't think they're going to believe me, do you? Is that what you think? Or is that what you want me to think? I don't really care one way or the other what you think. Hope. That's what you're telling me, right? Hope. See, a man who's going to have a fair trial, he's got hope. And a man who's got hope, well, he just ain't going to give you much trouble, is he? You killed a man, you're going to be tried. What'd you expect? That was self-defense. Then I'll turn you loose. <laughs> you really believe that, don't you, kid? Yeah, got two more canteens, Phil. It's gonna be kind of hard for you to ride with your hands tied behind your back. If you were to give me your word, you wouldn't try anything. You mean you take my word for it? Yeah. And you're a bigger fool than I thought you was. How's my horse? He's gonna be all right. He did a good job of Thank <laughs> you. 
Some boiling right away. Go on, move. It's a good clean wound. Bullet went right through. Looks like fire. I don't know how bad that's gonna bleed. I'll fill that coffee pot and bring it up here. Two canteens. That should be enough water for one man to make it across the desert. Yeah, we've walked. Well, you're not going to be able to walk for about a week. That leg needs doctoring now. I can't believe we'll send him. Not even if I said, give you my word? Be back by tomorrow night. Right, you. Yeah. Take good care of yourself now. I'll tell you about before I go. Don't worry, mister. Ain't nobody gone nowhere. Ain't nothing to carry no water in. And besides, he got the gun. Talking to you. The name is Davis. Mr. Davis, would you get me a drink of water, please? You know where that spring is as well as I do. I don't think I can get to it. Then you got troubles. Man could die out here without water. All day today. All night tonight, all day tomorrow. 
you can get pretty thirsty. Unless we can come to some kind of understanding. And it could be longer. You might not get through. This desert is an ugly place. Full of ugly things. Will you get some water for me, please? I don't fetch and carry for you, mister. You both. My name is Ben. You got to excuse me, Mr. Ben. It's kind of hard to forget them all the ways. <laughs> Mr. Ben. Just Ben. You drink of water. From Blainesville, they didn't get him either. He must have gone south then, like Mr. Cartwright said. Yes, sir. Cut around us and headed back for Wells Junction. Sheriff's already started backtracking. We're going to join him? No, we're going back to Verdon. Maybe Ben and Joe caught up with him. That may be all the way to Tonopah. Well, then we'll just have to go on back to Wells Junction. It's right on the way. Well, how are we going to know? They don't have a telegraph in Tonopah. That's right. <laughs>
pretty bad shape. Another couple hours, you'll be talking to yourself. You still haven't come to an understanding. I don't like being told what to do. I want to be asked. I asked. When a man holds a gun, ain't no matter how he says it, he's telling me. I'm getting heavy. Yeah. Tired. But I'm all nice and rested. All right, Mr. Davis. You hold the gun and I'll rest. You must have a lot of faith in me. I got the gun sooner or later. call you Mr. Ben if you don't call me Mr. Davis. That's your first name? No, that's my middle name. They didn't give me no first name, no last name, just Davis. Kind of strange. Yeah. What'd you call your horse? Buck. Is that his first name or his last name? Canteens? Yeah, he'll be tired, but he'll make it. By midnight, and somebody will be here in the morning. That's when I'll need you. Trade you in for a horse, some water, and a head start. Suppose you won't trade. Again, you ain't gonna need no doctor. I fear. Oh. That 
the same. You hungry? Yeah. That feels good. Yeah, I gotta keep you strong. Hmm. Answer me a question. You believe the answer? Why'd you kill Clayton? Is he a friend of yours? Hmm? He only got here about a year ago. I didn't know him. Well, I knew him better than you did. I know him all my life. He's the one that named me Davis. Is that a reason to kill him? There was others. You ever own a man? No. You ever been owned? Then you can't begin to understand the reasons. Well, uh, I can understand hate, though. Men kill for a lot of reasons. Hate's just one of them. You don't know nothing about it. A man that knows something about hate, he don't give away his gun. You think I made a mistake? No, mister. I don't hate nobody now. All my hate died with that man back there in Wells Junction. All I want to do now is stay alive. That's why I need you. You still haven't answered my question. Why'd you kill him? to Virginia City another way. Yeah, they could have. They I mean, well, to head on out, too. All right, Jimmy, you go get the horses. We've kept this man from his work long enough. Oh, no, no, that's all right. I, I was proud to have the company. If any of that posse straggles in, would you tell them we went on back to Wells Junction? Who's we? Well, me and him. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do her. I'll do her. Much obliged. Esos soldados vienen aquí, se van a buscar a los indios donde siquiera no saben dónde están. Yo les sé que ellos sí no me hacen caso. Tú, viejo flojo, que no sirve de nada. ¿Para qué no? En aquí en la noche nos van a matar cuando estemos dormidos. A ver, muévete para allá. Yo creo que está rezando el equipo que vengan los indios y me llevan para casarte con mi hermana, que es más joven, ¿no? No te conozco, viejo sonso. <risa> I gotta do something. The only thing I know to do is to cut it open and, and let it drain. You had that knife all this time. It wasn't you I wanted to kill. It was him. Now it's gonna hurt. We can't hurt much worse than this now. Oh, yes, you could. You better bite down on something. Go ahead, do it. <clears throat> easy, easy. Easy. Uh, yeah. That does it. Come on. Right now. Thank you. Well, 
I wanted to kill that man for a long time. I began making this knife to do it with. Ten years ago, right after, right after Callie. Ten years ago. Right after Kelly was moved up to that big house. Kelly was my girl, mister. Ever since we played together down in the quarters, two was old enough to work in the fields. She was the only thing I ever wanted. And he saw, moved up to the big house so he could have her there whenever he wanted her. <laughs> Never will forget that day. Never will forget them screams for help I saw in her eyes. Never will forgive myself for not doing something about it then. Just a swallow. You can have some more in a few minutes. You all right? Yeah, I am now. Bobby's back at the water hole. He's been shot. Can you ride? Yeah. Nobody's coming out there. I guess it's time for the horse trade. Uh, uh, what happened to Carrie? I don't know. She worked in the house about a year. She didn't smile no more. He sold her. See, after the war down there, everything just come apart, you know? People went every which way, and I couldn't find her. So I went looking for him. I thought I was free, but free man is the man on a big horse, you know. So I got me a big horse. A free man is a man who can take care of himself. So I learned how to use a gun. A free man is a man who can read and write, so I taught myself to read and write. I still wasn't free. All I was was a man with a gun, riding a big horse, reading the signs along the way, telling me I was getting closer and closer to Wells Junction. But for a minute there, back in that saloon, I was free. Just after you killed him? No. Just before, when I walked into that saloon, with the looking all done, there he was, sitting right in front of me. But he wasn't the man I was looking for. The man I was looking for was big and strong, with a voice like a cannon, with the power of life and death over everybody. And what I saw there was this ordinary, everyday-looking man, just blinking up at me, trying to get 
two of them glasses. No more power for me. And I felt sorry for him. I didn't want to kill him. But then I saw his gun coming up and I had to do something. Well, then you killed him in self-defense. That's what I told you. Well, there must have been witnesses. Yeah, the other man at the table. He saw Clayton draw first. And why'd you run? Why did you chase me? The man is killed. You have to answer for it one way or another. You're right. Well, I have come a long way, and I'm, and I'm getting tired. All right, Ben. You hold a gun, and I'll get some air. We caught up with them Indians. We saw them in Verdon and recognized your horses. Yeah. But they didn't have your gun, so I figured maybe you're still out here someplace. And hurt, maybe. Well, I've done all I can do for you out here. You'll be all right till we get you back to town. Thank you. Joseph will get to Wells Junction. Get the best lawyer in town for him. You bet. You know, you did a pretty good job cleaning out that wound, considering. All right, Trooper, bring them horses. See what's going on. Well, Joe will be out as soon as it's over, man. I just want to know why it's taking such a long time. Oh, it's not taking such a long time. I just want to look. It seems like a long time. All right, if it'll make you feel any easier, I'll go have another peek. Just like you said it was. Oh, yeah? The man at the table, the other man at the table, he admitted that uh, Clayton drew first. And yeah, they dismissed it. That's right. See, sometimes it it comes out right. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it happens right. What now? I don't know. Any ideas? What you want to do? Where you want to go? Well, I ain't never been there yet. But I know it when I see it. Yeah. I hope you find it. Thanks. Hey, still like to buy this horse? You don't think I could walk all the way across that desert to Tonopah, do you? Why not? I almost made it. Yeah. But you almost did. <laughs> Get out of here, will you? Hey, Buck. Let me fair away. What? Next time there's a posse. Don't volunteer for the desert. Russian. We got 20 more miles to go.
Sure you don't know him? Stranger to me. We'll take him on over to the funeral parlor. Mr. Cartwright, I'd like to ask you a few more questions. Fine. Sit down, Mr. Cartwright. talk to you a little bit, but I got some business to take care of here. I want you to go and do your chores, and then come back and see me. Hmm? Oh, and uh, here's a little, a little tobacco on the You come back and finish. Now, Mr. Cartwright, you said you were on your way to war, Bonnet. Yeah, I'm going to meet my father and brother there, pick up some horses and drive them back to the ranch. This woman you saw, that description fits about half the women in this part of the world. Can you pin that down a little bit? No, that's the best I can do. I'm sure I'd recognize if I saw her again. I wonder if you'd mind riding out there with me and show me where you found that body. Be glad to. Oh, um, one more thing. I'm going to have to ask you to stay around town till I can arrange an inquest. Maybe tomorrow, day after at the latest. Sorry to inconvenience you, but there's no help for it. It's no problem. I'll send a telegram to my father and warm on it. No, I'd appreciate it. Now, sir, I'm sure your son hasn't checked in here. And this is the only hotel in Warbonnet. I knew it. That bird, I knew it. When he told us he'd meet us here, I knew we wouldn't see you hiding here. And we got them horses back. Oh, he'll be along. You want to make a little bet on that? All I'm interested right now is a cold drink and a hot meal. Not the stairs to your left, sir. Thank you, sir. You know, even with little Joe, we're still going to need a couple of, couple of hands for those horses. Well, we'll get them. Well, I guess I've seen all there is to see here. Hey. Hmm? Take a look at this. That pretty well narrows it down. So, Walnut, well, her first to last name starts with L. Where'd you find this? Right over there, the tall grass. Yeah, well, it... It might mean something. Let's get back to town. Yes, Gideon, it's mine. I knew that. What I don't know is what it was doing at the scene of a murder. Well, I'm waiting. I tried to tell you, Gideon. I, I tried, but I couldn't. I'd give anything if it hadn't have happened. You mean you were out there? You, you killed him? Who was he? Harry Loomis. You told me he was dead. I thought he was dead. I knew he was. I believed that. I'm sure you didn't. As close as our marriage has been, I'd know if you were lying. Marriage, no, it was bigamy. Kidding, we didn't know. Your husband shows up and now he's dead. As soon as that comes out, there's no way back for us. I don't want you hurt. That's the last thing I want. That's not going to help. Come on, now you... You sit up here with me and tell me all about it. How you doing? Buenos dias, senor. 
What a fine caballo you have. Oh, you take care of him for me? It will be an honor and a pleasure, senor. I have never seen a more beautiful animal. Yeah, well, how much to take care of? For you, senor, a dollar a day with feed. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make it a dollar and a quarter if you do me a favor. Certainly, senor. Anything you ask. Put your hat back on, stand up straight, and wipe that silly grin off your face. <laughs> Where can I find the telegraph office? It's right across the street, senor. Good enough, thanks. He said he'd kill me if I didn't go with him. He was trying to push me into the buggy. I saw his gun. He would have killed me if I hadn't have shot him. I believe you. No one else will. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. Oh, why did you go out there, Lydia? What good did you think it would do? I thought I could persuade him to go away and leave us alone. I should have known better. You know this man, Kurt, right? Can identify you. What are we going to do? I don't know. I'll think of something. Meanwhile, you're going to stay here in the house. Out of sight. Telegram for you, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, uh, you. just little Joe. Tell us how to wait for him, please. Little Joe, all right. Delayed a day or two in Black River. What'd I tell you? To testify to coroner's inquest. Details when I see you, don't worry. No troubles. You'll find. Coroner's inquest. We want that to happen. I don't know. Gives me an idea, though. What? Well, we can go to Black River, find out what this is about, maybe pick up some wranglers. All right, let's go. We'll leave in the morning. Sir. Mr. Cartwright? Oh, Sheriff sure, Sam. Sure. Talk to you for a minute. Anybody want some coffee, something to eat? No, 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 thanks. Just want to tell you that I've identified the man you found. Oh, yeah? Put a name to him, anyway. Harry Loomis, Denver. To send a telegram to the Denver police, see what they can tell me about him. Anyway, I don't see any reason for you to stay around Black River. What about the inquest? Just give me a signed statement about what you saw and heard, and you can be on your way. Look, I've already sent that telegram to my father. I think I'll just stick around. Can if you want. Don't see any need of it. Well, look, I'm the only witness. Next day or two, I might spot the woman. I could identify her for you. You might. Suit yourself.
I want four or five of you men to go with Colton, get every horse off the street and out of the livery stable. Take him out to Colton's ranch. The rest of you go with Sam Hicks. He'll post you all around town. I've got a hunch this man Cartwright is pretty handy with a gun. I don't want anybody getting hurt. So if anybody corners him, you just let me know and I'll handle it. Lock this stuff up. we got work to do. horses when they come for them? They're at my place. Sheriff's orders. Your place, senor, that is a very long walk. Yeah. And as you see that cart right, you run and yell for the sheriff.
Tonight, come on over here. Where they take the horses? To Senor Colton's rancho, Senor. The hippies says all the horses in town must be taken to there. How far away is it? Three miles, maybe four to the south. And why'd you come up here? There was blood on the ladder, Senor. If you know I was up here, why didn't you tell them? Senor. Come on, put your hat back on and answer me. I don't want to get mixed up in this thing, Senor. What thing? What did the sheriff say happened out there? He says when he tried to ask you questions about the man you found, you, you ran away from him. And everybody believed him, huh? The whole town. What about you? You believed him. Why didn't you tell him I was up here? You would hear and you might shoot me. Come on, you're a bad liar. If you're afraid I'd shoot you down there, why'd you come up here looking for me? I do not like to see any man in trouble, Senor. You saw what happened out there, didn't you? Senor, when my father died, El Jefe gave us food and money. He said... Answer me. You saw what happened out on the street. I saw it. And what are you going to do about it? Senor, my mother works for El Jefe and his senora, and he gave me this job here at this stable. At what point you said that? El Jefe and his senora. He's married, huh? See, si, he's married. What's his wife look like? She's very beautiful, senor. What's her name? Lydia. Lydia. Senor, anybody in town will tell you El Jefe is a fine, honest man, and I cannot speak against him. Oh, yeah, he's a great guy. In Black River, senor, the truth is what El Jefe says. Yeah. And even if it wasn't, senor, you think the gringos would take the word of a pelado? No, I suppose not. What's your name? My name is Luis Valdez. Well, Luis, I can't run and I can't hide, so... If you want to get the sheriff, just go on and get him. I'm sorry, senor. If it was not for my mother. Don't be sorry and don't apologize. Just do what you have to do. Searched the barn when they came for the horses. And they love too. Al, Charlie! Barn's already been searched. I want your men to check every ranch within walking distance. Talk to the ranchers, check the buildings. Go on. to kill him, didn't you? Just a minute. Don't lie to me, Gideon. Please, don't even try. I heard the shot. When I ran out, I saw Cartwright on the ground, wounded. Got into the alley and 
And then you came after him with your gun in your hand. You did try to kill him, didn't you? What happened, Gideon? Why would you? Well, I... I talked to him tonight when he was having supper in the saloon. Tried to get him to leave town. Told him he wouldn't be needed for the inquest, but he, he wouldn't go. So you decided to kill him, to protect me? No, not then. I didn't know what I was going to do to him. Just get you out of town till the inquest was over or something. I don't know. When I, when I started home tonight, I saw him. We were alone on the street together. All I could think of was, here's a stranger, a man I don't know or care about, who could ruin our lives. Even then, I didn't do anything until he stopped and looked in the photographer's window. My picture. Forgotten it was there till he stopped. But he saw it. And he recognized it. All he'd have to do is ask anybody in town and they'd tell him who killed Loomis. And there he was. It seemed so easy. Only well, it wasn't. And I'm glad. Well, you know it'll happen now, don't you? Let it happen. You know, the first thing they'll say in court, you didn't bother to divorce Loomis before you married me. We'll tell them the truth. Ah, uh, they won't listen. So you met Loomis out of town, shot him, so I could call him a drifter and put him in a box and bury him, so all our troubles would be over. They know us better than that. No, you're wrong. Try them. It's too late, Lydia. Cartwright's out there with a bullet in him. Now, my bullet. How do I explain that? You think he'll, he'll accept an apology? Just get on his horse and ride out of town, let us alone. You can't have him hunted down and killed. It's too late. Gideon, you can't do it. Go on home, Lydia. And this time, stay there. Get us out of this somehow. some food, senor. It's awfully senor. There are people all around. Could leave both of us on if they were to hear it. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't ring the sheriff. As you said, senor, you could have killed me. Just talk. You could have forced me to help you, and you didn't. You do not treat me like a pilado. You understand why I cannot. Senor, you cannot stay here. Senor Colton will come very soon. He will find you. 
You must go away with me. You will find a place for you to hide. Senor, you must have a doctor. Luis, who is he? He's the man the sheriff is looking for. Ay, Dios mío. He was hiding in the stable and he would have been found there. And you bring him here? There was no other place. What is the matter with you? To help such a man is crazy. Mama, you have a lie about him. Get him out. No, I was there. I saw him. He shot him for no reason. Get him out. No, he is going to stay. We will see. Mama. Did you hear me? El Jefe is lying. Senor Bates is our friend. Your friend, Mama, not mine. Luis. A friend does not refuse to let you repay a kindness. He did not give us food and work and money to help us. He gave it to buy us. He does not want to be our friend. He wants to be our patron. Do you know what can happen to you for helping this man? See, si. and I'm just as afraid of as you are. But there's one thing I am more afraid of. And that is what will happen to me if I do not help him. When Papa died, you said I had to be a man. What kind of a man did you mean? Tonight I will get us horses and I will help him get away. But now he must rest. I must go to work. If I do not, the Senora Bates will come to see what's the matter. What's the matter? He's my mother, senor. She's very, very sick, and you must come right away. All right, I'll get my bag and be right with you. Is 
that Luis with Dr. Miles? Oh, si, senora. They're turning east at the corner. Toward your end of town. Maria? What is it? What do you mean, senora? I know perfectly well what I mean. Something's the matter. Something's very much the matter from the way you're acting. Senora? Do you know what Luis is doing with Dr. Miles? No, senora. And you're not curious about it, are you? Si, senora. You're not telling me the truth, Maria. Something's troubling you, and I want to know what it is. <laughs> Maria, what is it? Perhaps I can help. Tell me. Tell me. It is Luis. Luis, what about Luis? He, he, he what? He brought that man to Aracal. Man, what man? The man that Senor Bates is looking for. He's hiding him there. <laughs> I am Dr. Miles. Luis got me here under false pretenses. He told me his mother was ill. I had to, amigo. Your leg is very bad. Well, I'm only guessing, of course, but I'd say you're Mr. Cartwright. Well, that's good guessing, Doc. He's a friend of yours? You see? I'd be interested to know how that came about. First, I'd better have a look at that leg. Don't hold your gun, amigo. Never mind. It might make the doc nervous. I found him in the livery stable. He was trying to find his way out. What do you say about Cartwright? Well, the way he was mumbling, I couldn't make it out. Nothing but the name. Get some of this into him. Old man, I don't need you anymore. Uh, Sheriff, would it be all right to bring the horses back from the ranch now? Yeah, go on, bring them back. your story is true or not, Cartwright, doesn't make a bit of difference. So Luis told me. Gideon's a big man. I don't just say that because I'm a friend of his. I know what he's done. Well, just what has he done? When the mine petered out, he kept this town from going to rot the way a hundred other silver camps in the territory have. And one way or another, he kept Black River alive. In the past 15 years, we've had enough fires, droughts, all around hard times to kill a town a dozen times over. Except that Gideon just won't let it die. Gideon's more than just the sheriff of Black River. He is Black River. Luis, for your sake, I'm not going to say anything about this, but uh, get him out of here as fast as you can. Maybe a half is let the horses be brought back to town. I will go and see, huh? You watch out for yourself. And you rest, huh? Go on, Pike. Well, I tried to hold Cartwright for you, Sheriff. I could have done it, too, if you didn't have somebody helping him. Who? Oh, was that Mexican kid that works down the livery stable? revolver away, Mr. Cartwright. You won't need it. But you told the fellow outside of town, Mrs. Bates. How do you know who I am? Why don't you bring your husband with you so he could finish what he started last night? I don't want you killed, Mr. Cartwright. Any more than I wanted to kill Harry Loomis. You know, for some reason, I don't find that very reassuring, Mrs. Bates. 
Maybe that's because when I found Lewis, he was very dead. Because he tried to kill me. Well, I'll try not to make the same mistake. Now, why don't you come here? Mr. Cartwright, I'll help you get out of town. If you'll go away and forget that I'm the woman that you saw yesterday. And if I forget your husband tried to kill me last night? Yes. And you and the sheriff live happily ever after. That is, after he's looked me up and put a bullet in my head so I don't talk. No, Mrs. Bates, we're going to keep each other company. Just so I get a horse and get out of this town. Sit down. Come on, sit down. I wouldn't get your hopes up either. I'm not going to ride very far, just a war bonnet. I understand there's a U.S. Marshal over there who takes a very dim view of trigger happy lawmen. Anybody here? Howdy. Buenos dias. You in charge here? Si. You got room for a couple of horses? Sure. Listen, I want you to give them a good rough down. Real good now. And don't give them any water too soon. Give them a quarter of oats and some good hay. We'll be over at the hotel. Si, senor. He doesn't deserve to have his life ruined because of one moment of weakness. Believe me, Mr. Cartwright. Gideon's a good man. He's oh, come on, Mrs. Good. Bates. If he was a better shot, he'd be a murderer now. All right, Cartwright, drop the gun. Gideon. Drop it! How much have you told me? Everything. Good. It's all out in the open now. You know what my wife did was in self-defense. Maybe. Doesn't excuse the bullet you put in my leg, though. That was a mistake. I'm going to make that right. You and I are going on down to the jail and get this straightened out. Well, it's all but over now. He's not taking me to the jail. He can't. He wants you out of here so he can kill me and you won't see it. No, he wouldn't. Go on home, Lydia. Even if you kill me, you lose. Always the stable boy saw you shoot me last night. He'll talk. A Pilato? A Mexican? Who's going to take his word over mine? Gideon, you can't. If I don't shut him up, he'll ruin us. Now get out of here, Lydia. Okay. Sheriff just tried to kill me. I saw his wife on the road the other day after she killed Lomas. He's telling the truth. To protect me. 
Just came from the mail an hour ago. Lomas was wanted for murder. Dead or alive. a statement from everybody, Sam. Take my keys. We'll take that too. One more minute and we go, huh? What do you mean, we? Well, the father has hired me to drive you to war, Bonnet. Maybe even to your rancho. A couple of my friends are going to help drive your horses. Oh, look, I still think it's silly. I got into a lot of trouble for nothing. I'm not hurt that bad. I can ride a horse. Your leg needs another week of healing before you ride. The doctor says so. And he's the boss, Joseph. <laughs> All right, I won't argue with you. Now have your own doctor take a look at that leg when you get home, just to be sure. I will. Thanks, Doc. I'm sorry about what happened. So am I. Take care. All right, let's go, amigo. <laughs> <laughs> 